Moto America fans, it's time for another episode of Off Track with Carruthers and Bice. You'll laugh, you'll cry, and you may even learn something from this unlikely pair and their special guest. The mic is yours, Paul and Sean. Well, hello there, Moto America fans. Uh, this is Paul Carruthers, the Moto America Communications Manager, and this is our weekly podcast, Off Track. Uh, which features guests of all different sorts from our series, whether that be racers, team owners, uh, mechanics, crew chiefs. We haven't got to everybody yet, but we're planning on it. And uh, today we're doing a second round uh, with actually with Chris Parrish. Uh, Chris was our Twins Cup champion in 2018, and he finished fourth in 2019 with, uh, with a couple of victories. Uh, change bikes at the end of the season. We're going to talk to him about that. Um, I'm joined, as always, uh, today by Sean Bice, who's somewhere out there in the in the uh, farmlands of Ohio. Um, I'm here in Southern California. And uh, how are you today, uh, Sean? Hey, Paul. I'm doing well this morning. Uh, one of the things I wanted to tell you, I actually don't know the answer to this, so I want to ask you what what is your mom's uh, maiden What is your mom's maiden name? McFadden, like Nick <laughs> McFadden. So you're, so there you go. You're related to Nick McFadden. Okay. <laughs> God, that would be a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's even better than that's even better than the story that I was going to tell because, um, and our guest that's going to be on today doesn't know this, but my mom's maiden name is Parrish. So I have a whole side of my family that's Parrish. So. Um, the only difference is it's with one R, but I, I, that would stop me from saying that Chris and I are somehow related somewhere. But I bet you either his family or my family either took away or added a consonant, and we're probably all re we're probably related after all because we look so much, we look a lot alike, don't you think? I think you do. Um, <laughs> I, I see a family resemblance there. I I have some family members that are perished, but I don't have any that are perish. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Right. And so anyway, we can we can bring Chris in here in a second, but um just he Chris is like I when I think of when I think of Twins Cup, I think of him because it, it just seemed like when we started the Twins Cup, that's the kind of guy I envisioned doing it and and I was for the most part correct. I mean, at least it started that way with with guys like Chris. Now obviously it's grown and there's you know there's younger guys, there's this and there's and there's that, but I still think of him as like I don't know. He just seems like Mr. S Mr. Twins Cup to me, and I don't know why. And he he's also, I haven't done it yet, but it's actually one of my goals this year. He just seems like the kind of guy you just want to go out and have a beer with and, and have a good time. And and I don't know if you've had the chance to do that, Sean. I know you see a lot more of him in the paddock and stuff than I do, but that's one of the things I want to do because he does seem like that type of guy. So why don't we bring him in now and have a little chat with him? Okay, sounds good. Good morning, um, Chris. Well it depends on which bar you want to go to. I'm looking at one right now across the street we can go to if you want to. <laughs> it's a little early for me, and I doubt it take, but it would take me a while to get there, so it might be time. Yeah, I am in the in the frozen tundra of Minnesota right now. Oof. Yeah, I think I'll save the beer for the summer. Yeah, Chris, start out by telling us about tell us about what you're doing in Minnesota. Now you are from Hermitage, Tennessee, but um, well, I know you spend some time in Nashville. You and and Beth, your uh, your better half, are uh, um, big fans of the Predators. And uh, even though you're a Bears fan when it comes to football, but uh, it's interesting that you're up in Minnesota. I take you to be a little bit of a Southern guy with your drawl. So you probably are in a, a strange place with the, the climate right now. So start out by telling us why you're there and how cold it is. Well... You know, the, one of the given jokes about Minnesota is that you come up here to see the sights and, and the culture and everything, but you don't leave because your car won't start. It's so cold. <laughs> uh, excellent. excellent. It, it kind of happened the other day because it was like one degrees when I woke up. I think it was like Tuesday and the van had trouble starting. So I was a little terrified. <laughs> um but anyways, no, I am I am up here with uh, Andy Palmer at AP Motor Arts, uh, helping him. We're kind of just redoing the bodywork, uh, you know, for 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 our bike this year. Because um, I mean, all the years past, I've always gone, you know, out to 
you know, Fayetteville, North Carolina to hang out with Mike to, to always get my bike prep, you know, the SV and stuff. So, and since I'm riding with Andy this year, I, you know, I needed to come up here and help him get this program started. And there was things about the body work that I wanted to change. And he was, he, he thought everything was a great idea. So that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm here freezing and working on body work. <laughs> Um, and one one thing about uh, you, Chris, that I actually mentioned this on Facebook the other day when we ran your photo for Wheelie Wednesday. You probably saw my comment, but you have the distinction, and it's a pretty big distinction. You last year you won two races in Twins Cup, but more importantly, you won two races on two different brands of motorcycles. So you did win on your SV650, which was highly developed and is still a, a good motorcycle and, and is dominant and certainly won the championship this past season. But uh, the last couple rounds of the season, you raced on a on a Yamaha and, and also won at that, uh, won that a race on that and Barber, correct? So that's, that's quite a distinction for you. Well, yeah, um, I'm always an SV guy, and I always have been. I've been, I've been riding an SV for 14 years now, and and you know, I was able to win the championship on, you know, my bike that was brand new in 2018, and then last year it was developed a little bit more, and I was able to ride it better. You know, the engine was a little bit faster, but as the year progressed, my engine stayed the same, but you know. You know, M4 guys, they figured out how to make that motorcycle so much faster. So, you know, Dumas was going really fast. And then, you know, Mike and Spicer was able to get, you know, Curtis's bike to go faster. So I was just down on power. And, you know, a couple of crashes, a couple of incidents, just because I, I overrode the motorcycle. I squeezed every bit of power and ability out of that bike, and it, I, I just couldn't win. So then uh, Andy actually approached me, and he's like, hey, man you know, what are you doing next year? And I says, well, let's team up. So that was a conversation at Pittsburgh. And then I didn't do so good at Pittsburgh. And, you know, there was a lot of frustration. And then I actually called him up. I was like, hey, man, uh, you got a bike I can ride? And he was like, sure. He's like, get up here to Minnesota. Let's do some testing. So that's what I did. And he was able to put me a bike together for Jersey. In Jersey, the bike was down on power. And it was, you know, it was basically built in like a day or so it was kind of thrown together but when he was able to bring it back to barber it had a you know a good engine in it it had better suspension so we were you know able to adjust a little bit better for me to ride it you know the way i need it to so it was a good combination when we started last season and you, you finished third second and first in the first three races at that point, are you thinking, oh, this is business as usual, and then things changed? I mean, the other guys obviously got better, and, and like you said, you, were, you, you started to, to battle with not having enough power. But is that after those first three races, were you pretty comfortable and feeling like things were okay, or did you already kind of see that there was trouble coming? No, you're right. I mean, after the first three races, it, it did feel really good and felt comfortable. You know, we were going to have another good year because I was leading the points. And then we hit Road America, and then – it was right then and there I saw that my bike was down on power and we took it apart and and did a couple of things to it and got a little bit more power out of it. But still, you know, when we hit the West Coast, it was it was way down on power. And I just kind of, you know, already, you know, just kind of chalked it up then and there that I was down on power and I was just going to do the best I could. And so that was just got to the point where I was overriding the motorcycle and had a couple of crashes and man, it just it was tough year. Yeah, Chris, we looked at your lap times, you know, during the year and, you know, tell us about that regarding, I think obviously the level of competition, I think increased quite a bit, but the lap times among all the riders were a lot faster and you were, you were doing faster lap times on your SV this year than you did last year too. Isn't that correct? Yes, sir. That's absolutely correct. And, and it, it basically boiled down to the competition that was there, you know, especially Michael Barnes that rode it, rode Atlanta. I mean, the dude is a veteran and he's, you know, there's no telling how many laps he's done around there. And, and I probably have done, you know, just a little less than many laps than he has. So I know how to get around that track. You know, I just essentially just pulled out all the stops and just, and just rode that motorcycle as fast as it'll go. And it, 
actually scared the mess out of me. At the same time, it was just so much fun. And then it, you know, got to all the other tracks. It's, it's just the same business. I just had to go, and I just figured out how to go fast. It was, uh, it was just, it was really fun the whole season, but it was really frustrating at the same time. I mean, you've seen the class evolve, um, and obviously in a very short time from where we started to to where we ended at the end of last year. And I mean, there has been an influx of young talent. I mean, is ha, you get the chance to ride with these guys, and wh- what do you think of somebody like you know Alex Dumas, as far as his riding? Um. Well, I guess it was Barber the last round when it, where I was really able to ride with him, and he's a fast kid. Um, and he obviously was on a fast motorcycle too. I, and um, but riding with those guys, you could tell. You know, like I said, I've been doing it for so long, and some of the kids that are coming up, you could tell where they make mistakes, and it's generally where, you know, somebody like me or Michael will be able to, you, you know, be able to progress and pass and, you know, and go on. Um, but when you pass somebody like Alex Dumas, I mean, it's like he found the hunger and, and figured out how to pass you back. And that's a good thing, how these guys are coming up like that, the kids. Um, it, it's just, for me, it's just enjoyable to, to ride with them and see them coming up and doing so well in the, in the races and classes and stuff. Chris, from what you understand of, well, and I know you understand a lot, talking about the SV650 and also that Yamaha, you know, you take, for instance, in Super Sport, you take a Suzuki GSX-R600 or an R6, and I know they do a lot to those bikes, but it seems like they almost pull them off the showroom and, you know, I, 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 I'm I over uh, simplifying it, but, you know, the bike looks pretty much the same. Uh, your SV that you rode and the F and the Yamahas and even, even the Ducati of Michael Barnes. And when we have the Kawasaki's in there, you know, all those bikes are seem, seem to be more almost like naked street bikes or street bikes foremost. Uh, and you guys turn them into race bikes. Is it pretty accurate to say that you probably make more changes to the, the bikes in twins cup than maybe the guys do in, in super sport or, or possibly even Superbike a little bit. I mean, I know that Superbike does some things with triple clamps and all that kind of stuff, but the bike really looks quite different than what you'd see on this, the showroom floor. Do you, do you, would you say that's pretty accurate that you put, you do a lot of work on those to get them ready? Yeah, that's hundred percent accurate. I mean, it's, it's like, you know, me and Andy were having a conversation the other day, just looking at this mess that we have. We're, we're just, we're, nobody in this series puts enough time into their program as what we're doing. We're, you know, we're building body work from scratch. We're building air boxes and, you know, anything that we can build within, you know, the rules, we're doing it just to have, you know, that advantage or to make the motorcycle faster. So, yeah, definitely this class, you you have to put a lot of time and a, and a lot of homework you know, to get these motorcycles because essentially they are a naked bike off the showroom floor that is not supposed to be on a racetrack. And we're doing, you know, we're changing the geometry, the angles and everything of the forks, you know, the triple clamps, all that stuff. It's, it's, you know, some with the SV we've already figured out a long time ago, but, you know, still with Andy with this FC07 or MT07, we're still, um, you know, working on different setups and different styles and different different parts and it seems like we're going forward and we're going faster um so yeah yeah i don't know you know that much about super sport um you know junior cup but i know the super bike guys they do a lot of cool trick parts that i wish that we could do but we can't do it you know just because of the limits of the rules so yeah but it's really fun building these motorcycles that's one of the best part about it Building something that shouldn't be on a racetrack, make it look cool, and you ride the piss out of the thing just to just to see how fast you can go on it. It's so much fun. <laughs> hey, wait, comparing the two bikes, like the SV versus the Yamaha, is it as simple as is it as simple as the SV goes around the corners better and the Yamaha's faster, and you're trying to make the Yamaha go around the corners faster, and you're trying to make the SV produce more power? Is that is it as simple as that? It is as simple as that. Uh, the SV, or the, you know, we like I said, been riding these things since they came out, you know, 1999 or whatever the first year it was. 
Um, so the chassis has been developed on these things, and you know we figured that out. And you know, as far as the engine, it's limited on the power, just because you can't. You can make it as big as you want, and the thing will go fast, but the reliability of it goes down when you do that. And that was that's a good thing about Mike Copulus. He's figured out how to get really good power out of the thing, and it stays together all season. So with the the Yamaha, you know, it's it's a it's a totally different motorcycle, and it rides totally different. Um, and one of the main things, the main difference in between the two is the Yamaha is about 20 millimeters shorter than the SV, and that's what makes it so difficult to ride. So that's another thing that we're working on, but working with the triples and a couple other things to make this motorcycle longer so it's a little more stable. But the engine is already a 700 cc, so therefore the power is, is already, you know, more than the SV is. So to get, you know, more power within the rules, it's so much easier. Does that make sense? That's why the yeah. Yamaha is yeah. faster. You know, it, it's funny too, Chris, because, um, it's not quite cats and dogs living together like uh, like um, they said in Ghostbusters, but I think it's pretty funny that, it, you know, Michael Coppolis, you mentioned, um, who you've worked with a lot, and he's sort of known as being a guru of um, SVs and certainly Twins Cup bikes. And, you know, Andy, since the beginning, as long as I've known Andy Palmer with AP Moto Arts, he's been working on that, uh, what was the FC07 and is now the MT07. And, you know, there's kind of, I, I don't know, you can t you maybe correct me on this or whatever, but Michael's kind of all in on Suzuki's and Andy's all in on Yamaha. And here you are riding a Yamaha with a big Coppolis built uh, insignia on the front of your leathers because you're kind of all things to all, <laughs> both companies. And I know M Michael and you still have a good relationship. And um, it's, it's the camaraderie within the series, despite the fact that there's competition like that, seems to be as strong as ever. Would you, would you say that's true? Yeah, that's true. We're all friends. And that's a good thing about the twins guys. You know, first of all, we've been hanging out for a long time together. So we're all friends. When it comes to the racetrack, that's the only time that we're enemies, you know, when we're on the grid. So, um, um, but yeah, um, to, to switch over to the bike like that, I, I'm just a jockey. I ride these things as, as best as I can, as fast as I can. And the best thing I want to do is just represent what I'm riding on. So the, it was actually kind of funny. I was on the grid at, at Jersey, and Mike walked up to me. And uh, as we're just sitting there on the grid, just getting ready to go, whatever, he walks up to me. He's like, hey, Rob Silva, you got a Sharpie? And he wanted to scratch out his name that's on the front of my leathers. <laughs> it's, kind of, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, but no, no, I just, like I said, to, to hop over on the other motorcycles, it's, it wasn't a big deal. And, and, and I, I just, you know, for me to come over here and hang out with Andy, it, it, it's, it's just, it's kind of, it kind of sucks, you know, what's happened to Andy's program. It's just, he's, you know, since this bike has come out, I mean, this, this is his deal, you know, the FZ07, MT07, he's, he's made parts for it. He's worked on this bike in a long time, the body work, and it's just gotten to the point where, where people are starting to steal his you know, his parts or, you know, they're copying his stuff and it's, and, you know, and I just wanted to come up here and, and, and help change some things and help his program. And I believe I'll be a really good asset to get on his motorcycle and let's go for a championship. Let's, let's pull out all the stops and, and the let's go racing. And, and I think, you know, he's been down for a while because of everybody taking his parts and it seems like I've got him motivated again. And I swear he's, <laughs> I almost call him like Edward Scissors hands. He's he's in the shop. He's working on things. He's throwing things around, and he's just working and working and working. And then he steps back when he's done, and then there's like something cool that he's been working on for a while. You know, that's kind of Andy's style. He's he's messy. People know that he's messy, and he's but he he just makes like a really good product. And he you know especially this this Yamaha. I mean, he just knows how to make this thing go fast. And 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 I'm helping him figure out how to turn it. So hopefully we can come on and, and get a championship this year. With Dumas, it looks like he's going to stock 1,000. I mean, at least that's what we're hearing so far. 
Um, so you'll you'll lose the champions. So it'll it'll sort of put things back a little bit the way that they were as far as who who you probably think your competition is. Although, you know, the the guys like Jackson Blackman and stuff that started doing the twin stuff at the end of the year. I mean, obviously he's going to do it again. Do you? I mean, it, it, do you do you basically look at the same guys? Or are you expecting somebody new? How, how's that work for you as far as looking towards the next season? Well, I mean, I don't know. The only you know, other than Jackson, Hayden Schultz, I don't know anybody else that's coming and racing with us. It's you know, like you guys were talking about. We're trying to figure out the, the rider lineup of teams yet, you know, because not everything has been announced. But I'm excited. I kind of don't care. I just want to go racing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's obviously got to give you some confidence that you're starting with what you ended with instead of having to switch. Oh, yeah, definitely to, to start on the, the bike that I had last year with a few changes in the new body work and a whole new aero package that we're working on. And, you know, a better air box, it's, it's definitely, you know, big confidence going into the season. And just, just so people know, I mean, you've got this deal with Andy Palmer, you're working together. Um, you're going to have a, a, a better package, but I mean, just so people aren't confused, it's not like that bike's going to show up at the track and you fly in and you got the full factory ride and you just show up at the track and throw your leg over the thing. I mean, it, it you're still heavily involved from the beginning to the end, right? I mean, and you're you're throwing your stuff in the van and heading to the races. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I still have the van and, you know, and my homemade trailer and the, the bike will be in the back of it and be able to travel the country. You know, it's... There's no uh, full fly-in factory ride here. You know, we, it's, it's, it's a full team effort. We have to, have to work together to get the bike together and, you know, also get to the track. And, and, uh, and it's, we just got to, we got to do our thing. We don't, we don't have any help. You know, we've, we've, got, we've had help with getting a motorcycle and, you know, some logistic stuff and, and parts and things. But, but still, we have to get ourselves to the racetrack, you know, as, as cheap as we can and, and, and keep the program on a, on a small budget like we've had in many years past. And you enjoy that though, right? I mean, you enjoy, it seems like from, you know, looking at it from the outside, from the outside looking in, it looks like obviously you enjoy the hell out of riding the bike, but I think you enjoy working on it. I think you enjoy the traveling around the country and the atmosphere when you do get to the track. Am I right in thinking that like, there's not much about this that you don't like? No, I love everything about it. Yeah, I, I've always worked on my own motorcycles. It, it's just a bit of self confidence, you know, in that. And and to travel the country, you know, for me, it's it's. I mean, I can hop in the van, go to the racetrack, hang out for the weekend, and come back home. Um, but having Beth with me, she is the one that you know constructs our our tours and you know places that we visit. Because the way she thinks, she's like, I've never traveled the country before. You know, while we're out here, let's just go do this. I'm like, sure, honey. I mean, I'll go anywhere you want to go. If you're going with me to the racetrack to hang out, I'll go anywhere that you want to go. So it, it, it works out really well. And we've had a lot of fun. I mean, this old van, I, I got it oh, about four years ago. And like I said, it's a 1991 Astro van. It's a shorty. But now this van has been through over 40 states uh, with us traveling in four years. Wow. So lots of memories, lots of good stuff. Chris, you had mentioned uh, Beth, and I want to give a shout out to her, Beth Braun. She's uh, one of my favorites in the paddock, and I love to visit you guys just to talk to her, see her uh, little dachshund dapple. And um, she's something for going around the, the country with you, and it's cool that she plans that whole thing out. But the, the other thing I want to talk about is – you know, you guys have such a cool setup with your your livery on your bike that matches your your van and, uh, you know, that blue and silver. I actually thought it was because you're from Tennessee and you're Titans fans, but I know for a fact you're a, a Bears fan. So um, there is that. But do, when you're when you're going around the country and staying different places, uh, you know, stopping in at bars or whatever, do, do people notice the, the colors on the the van and do they ever say anything to you guys like wonder if you're some kind of a 70s you know starsky and hutch setup or something or what's going on there? <laughs> no, no definitely uh nothing nothing on the 70s theme or anything but we 
we get a lot of people that come by and and like it and surprisingly enough we get a lot of people that see the van and they're like oh man we know you guys we've seen you at the racetrack or we follow you on facebook or you know instagram and so that's pretty neat um so but well, while i'm here talking I, let me say hello to beth i miss you honey i love you i'll see you in a few days uh she's having to, to stay at home and work and, and everything she couldn't come up here with me um and as far as the the little the little dotson dog little dapple used to be my dog um oh i didn't know I, that okay <laughs> well i my mother passed away a bunch of years ago so i kind of inherited the dog and the responsibilities and then beth came along and then little dapple just likes beth better and then so i'm i'm kind of and so does sean apparently <laughs> I'm not sure I would have told you, told him that she was at home alone. <laughs> well, she's got the dog to protect her, you know. That's uh, right. There you go. That's right. Uh, uh, yeah. But, no, no, no. We we have a we have a we have a great time traveling in this van and stuff. I mean, it's it just got some no nostalgia to it. And plus, my my homemade trailer. And you know, if we sit down anywhere. Um, and we mentioned that we're not from around here. That's the first thing we say. And of course, that you know snowballs into you know what we're traveling in and stuff. And people have to see it, man. We're like, oh, that van is so cool. And so it's it's definitely a conversation piece. Yeah, it's very cool. It's it's a, it's a highlight of the paddock to 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 see you guys. Um, you know, I we taught we spend some time and we've had you on the podcast before with Jason Madama and I want to mention him. I know I think he's going to be back with us this year and I actually talked to him a little bit about the possibility of whether he was going to team up and have it was going to be a two rider team or you know I think he's still going to race a Yamaha. So um, is there any? Do you think you guys will get together? Do you expect him to be back in the paddock this year? Where, where is where is the hammer going to be? Do you think? Uh. Just by watching social media, he seems to be uh, out of funds. So he has his yeah. bike ready. You know, the, I think the engine's been refreshed and the suspension and everything. The bike's ready to go and he's ready to go. It's, I think there's some funding issues. So not sure if the hammer is going to be there or not. But um, as far as um, with me, I'll have uh, Darren James um, with me because Andy uh, helps Darren race. He, he's from Canada. so so. Darren keeps his bike here, and he takes care of it, and you know he rebuilds it if he crashes it. Um, and I uh, and I know uh, Cooper is with Barcon this year, but I think Andy's still going to help Cooper with his bike and stuff. So that's kind of our our little paddock that we'll have together. And um, I actually am going to rebuild the trailer, make it a little bit bigger, and I may, if I can find the funds, I'll put an awning on the side of it, and hopefully have like a big one twenty eight. I think it'll be cool. That's cool. And you'll be you'll be obviously going back to running 128 on on the Yamaha this year. Is your color scheme going to be the same, or are you going to change it up? Uh, it'll be the same, uh, I believe. Uh, I'm gonna have to add some red to it because uh, Mr. Paul Jensen with Gen Speed is helping out this year. Um, and then uh, get with Barnes Brothers and you know see what they would like to have on it. If anything, it'll just have a big logo. Of course, Andy doesn't. He doesn't really care. He just as long as it looks good, and but definitely we'll have the blue and black, and and may use a gray instead of a silver this year. Yeah, you know, and, and I want to say something about Darren James too. That's cool. I didn't realize he was going to be your teammate, but he's been w with us for a couple of years now. He raced uh, the first year of Twins Cup. I remember he joined us for. I know he was at Sonoma for sure, and I I've had a couple of good conversations with him. I know Paul knows that he's you know, uh, part of the family that owns Fred Dealey, the dealer, the very famous dealership, Harley Davidson out in the, I think it's West Coast Vancouver or whatever. But, you know, Darren's part of pretty much royalty when it comes to motorcycle dealerships. And it's great that he's still involved in the series. So that's cool that you got to have him as a teammate, Chris. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, I don't know him that well. I just talked to him a little bit there at um, Jersey and, um, at Barber, um, but to hear his stories about running the the Isle of Man TT on the Twins, yes. that was that was pretty neat to sit there and listen to that. But but yeah, um, I'm sure I'll know more about him this year and have a bunch of beers and stuff or whatever. Should be fun. 
Yeah, All it should right. be good. Um, go ahead, Paul. So I was just going to say, speaking of beers, should, should we let him? Uh, should we let him go have some more and, and stay out of the cold, or do you have anything else for him to uh, to digest here, Sean? Yeah, let me let, let me bring up let, let me bring up one more thing. Sorry, I was anxious to talk about this. We mentioned about Hammer um, Madama, but I also want to mention something about Hammer Team Hammer. And one thing that I think a lot of people do know about you, Chris, but I'd like you to talk about it for a moment is you uh, your Ghetto Customs, your company that you're you're a paint your paint company. I, I see that you've built a new garage and, you know, your painting is terrific stuff so much so that um, I think you painted the team hammer bikes last year. And from what I understand, you're definitely going to be able, you're going to be doing it this year, which is, you know, one of the, one of the premier superbike teams. So can you talk to us a little bit about ghetto customs and, and what you do in the side for auto or motorcycle body work and painting? Okay, well, it, I'll start from the beginning. Um, the whole ghetto custom started back when I was, um, you know, in my early 20s. Um, once I graduated high school, I got my first big boy job, which was right, you know, in the center of Nashville. And, you know, back in the mid 90s, Nashville wasn't a, you know, not so nice city, especially where my work was. So instead of traveling back and forth to Hermitage to downtown, which is like 20 miles, the traffic just sucked. So I bought a little house downtown and where I, it didn't bother me where it was. It was my first home. I had a lot of fun, rebuilt it and it had a garage. So at the same time I was doing paint work. And then, you know, my high school friends were afraid to come downtown because they thought I lived in the ghetto. And uh, so once <laughs> I got into doing paint work and cars and everything, people were like, man, I just got my bike or my car customized in the ghetto. So that's kind of how that started. And then it you know developed into endurance teams and and you know my team and so so that's how that started um but yeah i do have a i finally had to build a, a bigger nicer garage to to um keep with the flow of traffic um of the paintwork even with coming on mode america and people are seeing my bike on the grid and stuff it's it's i'm getting a lot of phone calls i'm getting a lot more work and then you know surprisingly enough um and I understand the situation, but Chris Ulrich called me last year. It was, you know, three weeks before Road Atlanta. He's like, hey, man, I need a painter. And so I went down to Birmingham. And I picked up about 47 boxes worth of stuff, which is bodywork, paints, and fenders, and whatever else. And, and just got to work and was able to, you know, get them on the grid. And, and he seems to be happy enough about last year that he's, he's contacting me again this year to to uh, help with their program. And, and it, you know, it, it was really surprising, like at some of the bike shows and stuff to, to see those bikes, you know, in the spotlight like that. And I'm like, man, those things look really good. So, so apparently I did, did pretty well. And uh, it, I'm happy about it. Yeah, I would say. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so, I mean, with that, if anybody's listening, if you want to contact me to paint your stuff, I'm, I'm, I'm really cheap. Because I know how to do it fast, I know how to do it cheap. But if you want something, you know, spectacular, th then that's where the money stacks in. And but most guys on race bikes, they don't care. They just want it done fast because they're going to crash it, you know, in time. And so, I just have one final question: Do you still live in the ghetto? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well I, 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 maybe I don't know because Nashville is. Nashville has grown so much, you know, the outskirts of Nashville is, is grown past where I am now. So, I mean, I probably do still live in the ghetto, but it's really nice where we live at, though. I mean, we're, we're actually, you know, I have a log cabin. We're tucked in the woods, and I got a nice big garage now. So, it's not the ghetto to us, but but whatever. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep the, the ghetto custom name because if anybody hears that, it's associated with me, and and we have fun with it. Yeah, it That's works. You keep really it. Do. Yeah, and let me let – me let me just jump in one more time by saying one thing about Chris that's that, that that's pretty cool about where he lives now is you know a lot of these riders you know the Cameron Bobiers and the Tony Eliases you know they go out and they do their riding on their bicycles and their training. Well, Chris Parrish's way of training is he's got a, a little bit of land and he mows his lawn with a push mower. <laughs> that's how he oh, I've seen that. <laughs> Are you still doing that, Chris? I mean, not in the winter, but. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's like, what, what was it? You know, a month or so ago when JD Beach posted his picture, you know, pushing his lawnmower <laughs> with getting a workout and stuff. I'm like, dude, you're 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 far behind. I do this every year. I've got three acres of mold by hand. What's that's nothing. <laughs> you could actually be his trainer. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys I mean, if he really wants to get into it he can he can come to my house and help me i mean it's a lot of work yeah I mean, it's one thing about if that's what you use as training i'm sure there's plenty of people that would give you the opportunity to go ahead and do it at their house <laughs> that's good all right you two clowns let's uh let's wrap this thing up and uh i thanks chris for joining us again and uh we look forward to seeing you at road atlanta and good luck with the off season and getting those new bikes ready. And uh, I'm sure you'll be successful as as you have been in the first two years. So good job, and and thanks for always uh, being positive about Moto America and and doing the right thing. So and Sean, uh, goodbye to you too. I <laughs> <laughs> love with you guys, man. I love it. I love listening to you guys, man. Hey, thanks for having me on, guys. And, and you guys be safe. We'll see you then. All right, you guys take care. Thank you. All right, sounds good, Chris. Thank you.